Well, Matt, I have to admit, I was not expecting an actual pirate ship where you build Kraken, but, um, shiver me timbers, I was wrong. Builder blog, this week it's the secrets of Kraken, and, uh, let's get Kraken into this video. Ahoy, mateys! So, Matt, yeah. I know a lot of people just know you as the crazy pirate on BattleBots, yeah. but we're here at the Kennedy Space Center. What is your official job title? So, my official job title is the Associate Chief Engineer for Integration, um, which is a really long way of saying, basically, I go around and fix stuff when the rocket's not working right. So, when they, you'll hear, like, the rocket will scrub or something like that, I'll help pull those teams together to try and troubleshoot that and figure out what's going on and then help solve it. So right now we're stacking the Artemis rocket. So we're working through getting the rocket all prepped and ready to go. We should roll out to the pad in about two weeks. So you're an official rocket engineer. You're, <laughs> you're literally building the future and that, taking mankind into space. That's the goal. Should be launching four astronauts here in about two months. Wow. I'm so jealous. <laughs> this is so cool. Yeah, it's it's awesome. I really love it. I love the job. Been here about ten years now. It's so much fun. <laughs> all right, Matt. So, what got you into all this rocket stuff? Uh, we came down to Florida whenever I was in uh, somewhere between second and third grade, and I took a tour of Kennedy Visitors Kennedy Science Center, Kennedy Space Center, Visitor Center Complex, um, and I just fell in love with it. Um, we're going to see a tour here of the uh, Saturn V rocket in just a minute. And I've got a picture of that where I was sitting on my dad's shoulders. And uh, it was just a great memory. Um, and then I went back to school and my third grade elementary teacher was a space nerd and just loved space. Um, and just really hooked me on all the space stuff that's going on. And I've loved it ever since. They can get in their space suit and they can clip their feet into there. And then the Canada arm could position them exactly where they needed to be. Because in space, if you just do that, they're going you're, away. They're going away. But with the Canada arm, they can kind of get held in place so they can kind of work on stuff. And just the tool. You put a picture of it. Oh. You anything and everything you want to know about this one. I know this one literally top to bottom. Okay, what uh, uh, what's the yellow ring do? The yellow ring right there is where it will connect the SRB segment, the aft uh, linkages connect the SRB to the core stage. Uh, so the, core, the SRB right now is sitting on the four vehicle support posts down there. You can see them, those little cones on oh, there. Oh yeah. That holds up, there's four on, obviously on each side. They hold up the SRB and the SRBs hold up the entire SLS rocket from there. Wow. And to give you kind of a sense of scale, these little towers here on the ends, these are the water suppression system. They, they fill, flood this with water. You could easily fit probably three or four people inside that tube, around. Wow. That's how big in diameter those are. Okay. Port, docking. Hey, Matt needs you to let him in. Stop fooling around. How's the weather out there? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going up and it's not going up. <laughs> One of the things people like don't understand, right? So all the arms that you see attached to the rocket, all the way up, except for the crew module where the crew access arm, all of those come off of the rocket at T0. They don't come off at T0 plus 0.1. They come off at T0. Wow. Because if the rocket, for whatever reason, stops, that's the only way we have to get the fuel back out of the rocket. Okay. So all of that stuff is still connected. When the rocket hits T0, all those arms have to get out of the way before the rocket rips them off. <laughs> you see right here, there's this one line that extends all the way from the top of the core stage, comes all the way down. It's right next to the uh, liquid oxygen down tube there. Right? Yeah, so that right. Line. That line. That's all explosives. What? So, so Why are you strapping explosives to the <laughs> rocket? We strap explosives on our explosives. Uh, America! If, <laughs> if the rocket were to ever go off course and it would be a threat to humans, other people, uh, we blow the rocket up. And the way we do that is we split the rocket in half from top to bottom and we open it up like a hot dog that was left on the grill too long. Let all of the hydrogen, let all the oxygen out at once and then it blows up. Wow. The astronauts on top get pulled off away from that mass. 
massive fireball using the launch abort system. So that goes off, and a fraction of a second later, the core stage is ripped in half. Wow! Uh, we talked that the, the water when we fill this, right? We fill it with water, not because of the heat, like most people think. We flood all that water in there, you see the big billowy cloud. That's actually to control the sound waves. Rockets are so loud, they would shake everything apart. They would actually damage the rocket itself because of how loud they are. So we put all that water out there, it turns to steam and it makes a big cloud and that big cloud helps dampen out the sound from escaping out and damaging the vehicle. Since you're an official rocket engineer, is there a difference between a rocket scientist and a rocket engineer? Uh, I would say yes. I would say rocket scientists would plan the orbital mechanics. They would do the, uh, you know, how we get to the proper orbit, how do we get to the right location. They would do the physics side of it. Whereas a um, rocket engineer would work on the actual design of the rocket. So they would do the, uh, like the mechanisms and stuff that make the rocket. So I would say, yes, there is a difference. So Matt, after seeing your job and the fact you're a rocket engineer, at the premier spaceport in the world. Why are you dressed like a pirate? <laughs> just just to, this is like when I come home from work and I'm looking for a way to relax and just put my pirate costume on, drink some rum, and then keel haul some people. You know, just a typical, <laughs> typical Tuesday night. You know? I, has the show ever mentioned you're a rocket engineer once? I, I don't think they have. I don't even know that they know. Like, I think they just think I'm a big goofball in a pirate costume. Like, that's just what I do. Like, they have, I don't think they have any clue. Like, oh, hey, yeah, I, I launch rockets when I'm not here fighting robots. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I, I remember when we had um, Black Ice. It was driven by an astronaut. They wouldn't shut up about <laughs> it was driven by an astronaut. I, I never even learned the guy's name. I just know... He's an astronaut. He's right. been to space. Yeah. And he's on battle bots. And I'm like, you're the real deal at the Kennedy Space Center working on the next moon mission. Yep. But I think most people know you as the pirate guy. Yeah, I'm the pirate guy. And I'm okay. <laughs> and at work, they call me the Kraken. So I'm okay with that too. Okay. So on Artemis, what part has Kraken worked on? On Artemis, which part has Kraken worked on? We keep Kraken away from the rocket ship. The rocket ship has lots of things to like to blow up, and Kraken uh, likes to catch on fire and light other things on fire. So those two things don't mix they very well together. Yeah. Understood. Yeah. Now, uh, what got you into combat robots? So, uh, funny enough, my wife and I, we've been together since high school. We started dating in high school and I was over at her house and her dad saw a, a, a thing in the TV guide for BattleBots. And he's like, you should check that out. I think you would like it. And um, I, we, I was like, flipping through the TV guide and I was like, BattleBots, BattleBots. I was like, it's on Comedy Central. I was like, this is probably gonna be lame. And uh, we flipped to the channel pull it up and uh, just in time to watch, uh, I think it was Backlash, just rip the back out of Disposable Hero. And I was like, oh, this is awesome. I'm gonna do this. And then from that moment on, every day since I have worked on BattleBots, drawn BattleBots in the margin of all my notebooks, made pictures of BattleBots, obviously built my own now, but, but yeah, it's been a dream ever since that moment. You and I have the same backstory. Literally on the same episode and fight. Nice. <laughs> yeah, it was such a it was such a great fight. It's such a great fight. You heard it here first. Matt and Zach are the same person. No, now we're soulmates. We are soul <laughs> mates. Soul to soul get it? Soul mateys. Mates on a ship. Soul mateys. <laughs> oh captain, my captain. <laughs> All right, what made you want to build a Sea Beast battle bot? Um, so the funny story with Kraken was we had the name Kraken before we had the design of Kraken. Uh, we had the pirate theme, I think first. Um, we were driving up to an event in North Carolina, um, hosted by Chuck Butler, who's also on the Gruff team. 
Um, and Chuck runs some really fantastic events up there in North Carolina. Uh, but it's a long drive from, from at the time we were in Georgia. Uh, so a long drive from Georgia up to North Carolina. And so while we were in the car, we were talking, like, hey, they're coming out with BattleBots. So there's going to be a new season. We need to figure out how to get on the show. And um, we're like, we need a theme, right? And it was like, no one's doing pirates. So let's do a pirate theme. Uh, so we came up with the pirate theme. We thought of the name, the Kraken. And then from there, we designed the robot around it. So it started as a, a vert spinner style, like a, like a backlash, right? Because that was my favorite robot as a kid. And I wanted to make, I like big, big vert spinners. Um, so it was going to be like a, a, a nightmare or a backlash. And then it pivoted from that to like a diagonal, almost disc spinner. Uh, but that didn't, it kind of looked lame, didn't really like it. And eventually I ended up drawing uh, the Crusher Kraken in, in my notebook. Um, and uh, the final version of Kraken, what it looks like now is very close to what the original sketch that I made looked like. Um, and we pitched that to the producers on the show. Um, they loved it. Um, and so then from there, it was pretty easy. It was like, all right, we're building the, whatever this is. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think is the strangest detail about Kraken that people have probably never seen? Um, so there, on the original Crusher Kraken, when we were biting, the eyes actually lit up red. So when we were when we would bite, the eyes would turn red. When we were releasing, the eyes would go back to white, and that was a visual indicator to us that we were, you know, properly biting and venting. And it also helped us with the reps because the reps would be like, "You got to release," and we're like, "Hey, when we're biting, the eyes turn red. When we're releasing, the eyes turn white. So when we're releasing, we're trying to release. It takes a while to vent the airbag down." Um, and get it get it to fully open and get the other robot unstuck because it's yeah. trying to bite holes in it. Um, it takes a little bit, and uh, but that would allow, help kind of get through those where we're kind of hung up together so that they could kind of see what was going on. Um, and right here, actually, this is the airbag that actually powers the crusher in Kraken. So this airbag would sit inside the jaw here and it inflates right now, fully deflated, it's about three quarters of an inch thick. And then once it's fully inflated, it'll inflate to about eight inches thick. And so it's designed, as you can see, probably here, it's designed to run at 10 bar, which is 145 PSI. Uh, so we go over that just a little bit to 500 PSI. And that's, <laughs> that's how we get the pressure. To yeah. Work. Yeah, so it's only, it's rated to 145. We called uh, Sava, who's the manufacturer of this, um, they're over in Europe and they said, yeah, we can, we actually rate it to the burst is six times the, the rated pressure. And that's at a uh, thousand degrees Celsius at that temperature that it's got to be able to still withstand that pressure. And I was like, that's very high. That'll be much higher than we'll get to. So it'll be fine. We'll be fine. So I think we could push this even just a little bit higher and bump the pressure up just a little bit more in the crusher. But uh, at 500 PSI, we're producing over a hundred thousand pounds of force in the jaw and it's actually, it splits the frame. It'll crack the frame right down there on the inside of the robot where the, uh, the frame comes down and we'll get little stress cracks down there from a full pressure bite. Wow. I, I always tell people the hardest part about crushers is you have to be able to survive your own crushing. Right, <laughs> yeah. We're, at the same time, we're trying to squeeze the other robot together. We're also trying to rip our own head off, so. It is, it is its own its own challenge. There's a lot of steel that has to go into places that aren't armor just because it's gotta be framed to hold itself together. So this is the uh, the frame you're talking about underneath. Yep, yeah, so this is this is what the what Kraken looks like when all the the jaws pulled off and the heads pulled off. This is actually the bot that fought against Witch Doctor and also fought against Sawblaze. So this is where Sawblaze cut into the frame down here at the bottom. Um, and there's where he cut off one of the, cut off the oh, yeah. armor there on that side. And he cut the wheel off on the other side over there. It's kind of buried under spare parts, but you can see he cut a hole in the frame back there. Uh, but yeah, the airbag will sit against this surface here and it'll push down, it'll inflate here, and that's what squeezes the jaw down. And then there's springs inside the jaw that run up through. There's a little strap with a slot back here. It'll pull that strap through there. The springs are in the jaw this way. And as that goes down, it pulls the, 
the strap and then it springs it pulls it back up wow and is that big circle what you're pivoting off of nope the big circle is there it's just so we can run the airlines in and out and we can run our wires in and out for the eyes and stuff like that the, the pin in the back it's an inch and a quarter diameter pin is what we run for the back jaw wow and you want to tell the world tell your adoring fans tell the other pirates <laughs> um just we'll be back you know the last uh last two seasons didn't really go our way we went oh and five and oh and four oh and four oh and five i don't remember exactly which one but it was not not good um but we learned a lot with the hammer saw version um and trying to make a robot that has a weapon like this but also still looks kind of like this was challenging and we but we learned a lot from it so uh when the new season fires up we'll be ready with a brand new robot that's uh gonna live up to the crack and reliability and maybe we won't win every fight but we're probably gonna win at least one maybe hopefully one just one please why is the rum always gone? Why is the rum always gone? <laughs> it's because we play BattleBots. <laughs> Fly me to the moon, Matt. I Fly know your me face. To the moon. You gotta go to that end. <laughs> go to that end. That's where you get to the moon. Well, what comes out of that end? That's where the flamey bits come out. The pointy bits on that end, the flamey bits on that end. I love the technical explanation. If you want to go into space, you need the pointy end pointed up. It's true. <laughs> the training is complete. She's ready. We're, we're going to sign a, her up. I'm a space engineer <laughs> or something. Well, Builder Blog, it turns out if you make too many pirate jokes around Matt, you get put in the gallows. So I hope everybody enjoyed this week's episode of Scorpio's Builder Blog, The Secrets of Kraken. And Matt, how long do I have to stay like this? Matt? Matt? Uh-oh. <laughs> I will I will stay as long as I can support you, but I will marry well afterwards. <laughs> no. My treasure. <laughs>